In this video, we're going to look at the structure of a plant cell and how this relates to its function. As ever, we're going to be using the AQA AS Biology textbook by Glenn and Susan Toole, and this time it's pages 158 to 160. Let's look at our objectives. You're going to describe the structure of a leaf palisade cell. You're going to describe the structure of a chloroplast and how this relates to its function. You're also going to describe the structure of a plant cell wall and how this relates to its function. And finally, you're going to compare the structure of a plant cell with the structure of an animal cell. So let's get started. Here's our typical plant cell. This is a cell that you've always drawn when you were asked to draw one. It's nice and easy, nothing too complicated here. And this is a leaf palisade cell. We've got a nice rectangular shape, which allows many of these cells to line up and form a continuous layer. We've also got plenty of chloroplasts to harvest as much light as possible. And we've got that large central vacuole that forces the cytoplasm and all of its contents up against the cell membrane and cell wall. Moving on, we're going to look at the chloroplast. Now, at AS level, we can't just draw little green blobs. We have to add in that extra detail. So, the chloroplast is a double-membraned organelle, which allows all of the reactions of photosynthesis to be compartmentalised inside it. This dual membrane is also one of the pieces of evidence that suggests that chloroplasts were once free-living organisms. Inside the chloroplast, we've got thin membranes called thylakoids, and these form into stacks known as grana. The thylakoid contains th chlorophyll, which is essential for the first stage of photosynthesis. The fluid part of the chloroplast is known as the stroma, and this is basically a soup of enzymes, very similar to the cytoplasm of the cell. So how do these structures aid the function of the chloroplast? The grana provide a large surface area, meaning that the maximum amount of light can be captured, the stroma contains all of the enzymes necessary for the second stage of photosynthesis, and also DNA and ribosomes, so they can manufacture new proteins. This means that the chloroplast is almost entirely self-sufficient. Let's move on and look at the cell wall. We know that it's made mostly of cellulose, arranged into fibrils. We discussed this in the previous video. Now also present is a structure known as the middle lamella, which is the boundary between adjacent cells and it acts to bind the cells together. And we can see this in the diagram above, it's the red area. So what does the cell wall actually do? Well, it provides strength and it allows the cell to resist osmotic lysis. It gives the whole plant strength and rigidity and it also allows water to travel through it, therefore contributing to the overall water movement through the plant. Let's compare plant cells and animal cells. So, plant cells have both a cell membrane and a cell wall, whereas animal cells only have a cell membrane. Plant cells have chloroplasts, whereas animal cells don't. Plant cells have a large central vacuole, whereas if animal cells do have a vacuole, they're going to be smaller and there's going to be a couple of them spread out through the cytoplasm. Plant cells also have starch grains for storage, whereas animal cells use glycogen. Again, we discussed that in the previous video. So let's summarise this. Leaf palisade cells are well adapted for harvesting light. They have a large surface area and contain plenty of chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are well adapted. They have a large double membrane to allow compartmentalisation of reactions. They also have stacks of chlorophyll containing thylakoid known as grana to increase the surface area. And they have stroma which contains enzymes. Cell walls provide strength, rigidity and a route for transport of water. OK, here's some extra reading from Nature magazine. It's a really great little article that goes into a bit more detail about the topics that we've discussed in this video. It's really worth a read. Use a QR code reader on your smartphone to scan this code or go to the link below. Thanks for watching.